Dear shareholders, and again, I would also like to extend a very cordial welcome to this annual general meeting of Fresenius. Again, we have to hold it online instead of on location in Frankfurt. And again, we cannot uh, be together with you in the same room. This is something we have gotten used to. Well, almost. This is our new Corona routine. Nevertheless, it still feels a bit strange, at least for me. The photograph on the slide shows our AGM from two years ago. That's not all that long ago. And nevertheless, it almost seems like another world. Even today, we are continuing to perceive that these are extraordinary times. That applies to the whole world, but it also applies to us as a company. We are looking back on a very special year, a year unlike any that we've ever experienced before, a year with great challenges, both medical and economic, challenges that for the most part are still with us. How did we deal with these challenges? How are we going to cope with these challenges in the future? What have we achieved and what are we going to do in order to remain successful in the future? And this is what I would like to tell you about. What is most important to me at this point is our contribution to the fight against the coronavirus. It was very clear very early on. We are needed, and more urgently than ever. Healthcare systems have to work, especially in a crisis like this. And we are doing our part. We are committed, active, focused, Worldwide, we are doing everything to ensure that people are receiving the best care possible. This is our responsibility, and this is what we stand for, and this is Fresenius. The coronavirus is challenging us everywhere, in our hospitals. Just last year, we treated more than 42,000 coronavirus patients. In dialysis, we are making sure that patients suffering from kidney disease continue to receive their life-giving dialysis with our products, be they solutions for use in acute dialysis or anesthetics for use during artificial respiration. The coronavirus has dramatically increased demand for our products. We have done everything possible to maintain their production and distribution. Where necessary and possible, we even increased our production rapidly and flexibly, and of course, without raising our prices. This was and is possible for one reason only. The unparalleled commitment on the part of our employees, you've already heard, we now have more than 310,000 employees worldwide. Day after day, they accomplish tremendous things, especially now in the middle of a global pandemic. They are there for their patients. And again today, it will not be possible to have you join me in applauding their achievements due to our virtual meeting, but I'm sure, confident that I'm speaking on behalf of all of you when I say our heartfelt thanks to our employees. You save lives. You are Fresenius. Of course, there was more to 2020 than the coronavirus. Independent of the pandemic, we achieved important successes. We set our course for the future. We established the basis for continued growth. Here are just a few examples. Acquiring the Eugene Group. At the end of last year, we signed the contracts. In the meantime, this acquisition has been successfully concluded. What does Eugen do? It helps people who are unable to have a child in the normal way. Eugen is one of the leading international providers in this area with a network of 31 clinics. And there are another 34 locations on top of that. Eugen is represented in nine countries on three continents. Their most important markets are the United States, Spain, Brazil, Italy, Sweden. Eugen is a perfect fit with Fresenius Helios. It is a highly profitable company. It is well positioned in a number of attractive markets, and we share the same commitment and promise. 
patient well-being and cutting-edge medicine. With this takeover, we are creating a sound basis for continued growth, organically and through additional acquisitions. Already, about 70,000 babies are born annually in our hospitals, almost 200 every day. With Eugen, we will be even stronger in the future. Together, we will be able to help many more people realize their great wish, namely the wish for a child of their own. I believe this is a wonderful motivator for everyone. So, how do things look in our hospital business? Here, too, we continue to expand in 2020. In Germany, we acquired four hospitals from the Malteser Humanitarian Aid Group in Bonn, Duisburg, and Krefeld. Together, they have about 100, uh, uh, 1,300 beds. One of our strategies at Helios is to build centers, bundling specialist expertise and knowledge for a region at one location, and thus increasing medical quality. These four hospitals are a great fit into this concept. We also expanded our network in Colombia with the Clinica de la Mujer in Bogota, a maternal hospital. Prior to that, we were only present in Medellin and Cali, and now we are also present in the capital of Colombia. Another important growth area, home dialysis. Here, Fresenius Medical Care has made a great deal of progress. The next stage portfolio has now also been successfully integrated in Europe. And this means that our European patients also have a greater selection of treatment modalities so that they best fit into our patients' lives. And if it's suitable, then their blood is cleaned at home. In the United States, 14% of our dialysis treatments are already performed this way. Home dialysis is not for everyone, but it can offer many advantages. It can means flexibility, more frequent gentle treatments, together with improved safety. And this is certainly a factor during the pandemic. And therefore, uh, this has further boosted the already growing demand for home dialysis. Another important step taken last year was that Fresenius Kabi applied for approval for a second biosimilar, both in the United States and in Europe, a biosimilar for Peg team, a medication used to treat cancer. We expect approval to be granted later this year. And we have additional biosimilars in our pipeline. As you know, biosimilars represent a fairly new business area for us, but it is one in which we have high hopes. To date, we have been very satisfied with the development, but the year 2023 will be an important year. This is when we expect to launch our product Idacio in the United States. This is our biosimilar for adalimumab. It reduces inflammation, for example, with rheumatic disorders. This will further significantly increase our revenue from biosimilars. Our expectations then, an amount in the high triple-digit millions of euros. And we've also made further progress in the area of sustainability. Uh, although it is true that the pandemic has stolen the limelight for now, and it is the most urgent problem, nevertheless, sustainability is the great issue of our times. Short-term impact is no longer the only thing that counts. The same holds for quick successes. What is becoming more and more important is how do our decisions and measures stand up in the long run? What is their impact on people, on the economy, on the planet? Thinking and acting like this is deeply ingrained in Fresenius, and it has been that way throughout the past 100 years of Fresenius, and it will continue to be that way in the future. Sustainability applies at all levels. We offer medicine that is of high quality and yet affordable. And right now, you can see how important both of these aspects are. We are a reliable partner in the healthcare system worldwide. We're also a good employer for more than 310,000 employees. We have a long-term oriented growth strategy. And of course, we want to 
handle this planet's resources as carefully as we can. But as I already made clear at last year's annual general meeting, presumably we did not talk enough about our contributions to sustainability in the past. We took them for granted, perhaps, and perhaps our various actions may not have been coordinated as well as they could have been. But we are in the process of changing that now. As previously announced, we have set up a sustainability body at the corporate level in 2020. This body reports directly to me. And the task is to further develop sustainable practices throughout the company. We want to further solidify our non-financial targets. We are going to constantly weigh ecological and social concerns in our business strategies. And we want to adapt the remuneration system for the management board. In the future, non-financial aspects are made are to be made part of this, and you will have the opportunity to vote on that today. So you can see, we have successfully continued to develop in many areas during 2020. We have laid the basis for continued profitable growth, sustainable growth, and we have played our important role in a global health crisis. But let there be no doubt about this. The coronavirus was and is a heavy burden. Despite our best efforts, we have to realize that the pandemic has caused us economic losses, substantial losses. This may come as a surprise for many at first. I mean, a company like ours, shouldn't we be doing particularly well in a time like this in a global health crisis? No, this is not the case. The pandemic has disrupted many economic activities, and this has also negatively affected us. Particularly, Fresenius is much more than just intensive care medicine. We experienced and are experiencing substantial burdens due to the coronavirus, and this applies to all of our business units, all four. For example, uh, the so-called elective operations, i.e. operations that are not acute, that can be delayed, at least for a while. These account for the bulk of operations in hospitals, and they have been de declining substantially almost everywhere in the world. And of course, this has had an impact on Fresenius Helios, but it also means less demand from many products made by Fresenius Kabi, because these products are used precisely in such operations, from intravenous solutions to anesthetics. Fresenius Vomit has also been hit hard by the pandemic. Fewer elective operations mean less demand for rehabilitation. Our thermal spas have had to stay closed for extended periods. And ongoing restrictions on travel have also cut significantly into our project business. And on top of that, many hospital projects in developing countries have been interrupted, delayed, or even canceled. And last but not least, there is dialysis. Kidney patients in particular are at risk from the coronavirus. Very sadly, this has been confirmed. Since last fall, substantially more dialysis patients have died than normally. Above all, this is a great human tragedy and one that has affected me deeply. However, it has also impacted us economically because these treatments were planned and now they are missing. This means lower revenues, but our costs still continue to rise. If you look at everything and take it all together, then I believe that in 2020, we have performed well as a business. We were able to increase our revenues once again, despite the pandemic, despite the impediments I've described. Our revenues totaled 36.3 billion euros. At constant currency, this is an increase of 5%. However, our earnings, that is our net income, has declined for the first time in many years. Nevertheless, it still totaled 1.8 billion euros. Nonetheless, in currency-adjusted terms, it represents a decrease of 3%. This much is clear. Given the circumstances, it was a successful business year. However, it was not a year of dynamic growth, 
uh, not what you have come to expect from us and not what we, we would have liked and not what we would have expected before the coronavirus hit. Nevertheless, we have shown that our business model is stable. It is resilient, precisely because our suite of products and services is so wide. If the estimated COVID-19 effects were to be excluded, we would have met our original targets in full, and we would also have significantly increased our earnings. And that is why I also have some good news about the dividend. Good news for you. Why? Because, again this year, we would like to further increase the dividend, despite the ongoing burdens, despite the small decrease in earnings, because we are looking at our continuing and sustainable growth drivers, and they remain intact. The, the coronavirus has slowed our, our growth. That is true. But our core business? It is proving to be very healthy. It is growing continuously. This is a solid operational development, and we want you, dear shareholders, to participate fairly in the success. Our proposal to you is a dividend of 88 euro cents. This is four cents more than last year. That means 5% more. And it would be the 28th consecutive increase. If you approve, should you approve this proposal in a good conscience? After all, we did receive payments from the government last year. Nevertheless, the answer is yes, definitely. If we had had any reservations about this, our dividend proposal would have been different. First and foremost, these government payments were compensation because we kept our hospitals free for COVID-19 patients by order of the authorities. Therefore, we have had to waive many other treatments at the cost to our revenues and earnings. And of course, we are paying tax on this compensation. And if we were to deduct them, they, we would still have made a decent profit, which uh, is several times the amount that we propose to pay out in dividends. Because it is a fact, most of our earnings flow into ever better medicine, into our sustainable, healthy growth, and to put it short, into our future. Dear shareholders, let us now take a look into this future, the future of Fresenius. What are our expectations? Let us start with the short-term outlook, our forecast for the ongoing fiscal year. Here, too, we have to acknowledge the coronavirus still has the world firmly in its grip. Here in Germany, the third wave is slowly receding, and uh, this also appears to be happening in many other countries, but the situation remains dramatic in India and also in Latin America. At the same time, there is ground for hope. The vaccines appear to work well, and they are protecting more and more people every day. So what does this mean for our company? As of today, I'm assuming that we will have to deal with corona-related burdens for quite some time yet. Probably until at least the middle of this year, that is the second half of this year, will the situation be better. Then we expect significant relief step by step. The speed of vaccinations in our most important markets will be crucial here. In specific numbers, we are projecting sales growth in the low to mid-single digit percentage range and net income will increase broadly at the same level as 2020, at least. Both measures are in constant currency, and you can see, even in the short term, we want to continue to grow and we want to remain very profitable, despite the ongoing burdens. Currently, all the indications are that we will be able to reach these targets. We started the new year off well. In the first quarter, we increased sales by 3%. Our net income showed a decrease of 2%. These figures, too, are in constant currency, but please keep in mind that this comparison with the first quarter of 2020 is, uh, which means that it was far less impacted by the coronavirus. Yet, Nevertheless, we were able to increase our sales and our earnings were only marginally lower. This makes us very optimistic for the full year. 
And what does it look like beyond 2021? What about our medium-term guidance? After all, we have set very ambitious targets there. You will recall that we forecast average annual growth of 4 to 7 percent in sales through 2023, and the net income is expected to rise from 5 to 9 percent. We are sticking to these targets. Even though they were defined in early 29, long before the coronavirus emerged, at that time, no one foresaw a pandemic like this. So the situation has changed drastically. But as I said earlier, our core growth drivers are largely intact. And for this reason, we are convinced that we can still continue to meet our midterm targets. Last year, we grew more slowly than uh, we expected in 2029 due to the pandemic. That will also be true this year. This means that in the next two years, we will have to significantly accelerate our growth. To ensure this, we have embarked upon a series of strategic initiatives, an entire package of measures that we are taking to increase our efficiency and profitability. All business segments are included. This program will run over several years, and the interim goal is set for 2023, but the measures will continue to have an L impact well beyond that time. It's a little too early today for specific details. The targets have been defined, but not the precise route. Essentially, we will have to examine our existing structures and business models. Is there a good reason for everything that we are doing and the way we're doing it? Are we duplicating? Are we duplicating or even triplicating anything? Where are synergies feasible and can be leveraged? So here are a few examples. Our purchasing processes can still be optimized, and we can also bundle certain service functions even more. In our hospitals, as already mentioned, we are building stronger regional networks. Our hospitals and clinics will specialize even more. In some areas, we're also going to adjust our capacities. We're going to adjust our capacities to the changes in demand. In our German hospitals, for example, where some medical positions will be eliminated. The reason for this is that people's needs are changing. There is an ongoing trend towards more outpatient procedures, and this has to be taken into account. But while ensuring that we are not making any reductions to the type and quality of care that we are providing. We are proceeding very carefully in a targeted way, site by site. In some hospitals, this will mean eight or nine fewer medical positions. In other hospitals, two or three. In some hospitals, there will be no reductions in the medical staff, or one or more positions may even be added. Specifically, this means that we plan to reduce our overall medical service staff by about 3%. At the same time, we're expanding our outpatient and digital offerings to provide seamless care across sectors. That is good for patients, and it is good for our healthcare system. And of course, it will also help to secure our success as a company, and thus to sustain tens of thousands of jobs at Helios. These are only a few of the approaches that we are taking. And as I've already said, this is still the beginning. We are still reviewing and things and planning. But I hope this gives you an idea of where we are headed. Of course, we also want to reduce costs as part of this. And as of 2023, we expect sustainable savings. These will involve at least 100 million annually after tax and minority interest. And I do not want to rule out that this will mean that we might divest ourselves of some areas of our portfolio or of some size. But that is neither certain nor is it the focus of these efforts. We're not talking about streamlining our company or cutting back just for the sake of making the company leaner. It is about making our company more efficient and stronger. Our first goal will be to free up the means to do better and more important 
things, things that will help us to expand our business and to grow further, for example, in our new areas of growth. I've already mentioned three of them, biosimilars, home dialysis, and fertility medicine. We are also going to significantly expand our digital offerings. A coronavirus in particular has provided a huge boost in this field. Consider telemedicine. This is an area to which the pandemic has opened many people's eyes. Generally speaking, much of what is now being done for inpatients will be done on an outpatient basis in the future. And a lot of what is now being done for outpatients will be able to be done at home in the future. Networking will play an ever-increasingly important role, as will artificial intelligence. We see clear confirmation of our approach, and we are working at full speed to expand our offerings. And what about our group structure? Is that also up for review? The fact here is we are almost always looking at our structure. This is a perfectly normal process, and there aren't any taboos. Uh, there is nothing that cannot be questioned. If we conclude that structural changes are necessary, and this can help us to achieve our goals faster, then we will look at our options very, very carefully. But as things stand now, I think our existing structure is the right one. It has served us very well over the years, and it continues to offer us considerable advantages. With this structure, we are well positioned for the tasks that lie ahead. Dear shareholders, I am coming to the end of my speech. I hope that you have now obtained a very good view of where we stand and where we're going. To recap, we have had a challenging year behind us, and the challenges persist. We at Fresenius have played a role and made our contribution. Even in a pandemic, we have ensured the care of our patients. And beyond the pandemic, we have also received, we have also reached milestones. Although the virus and the pandemic has burdened our business, we have still performed well for the year. We reached our targets and we are proposing our 28th consecutive dividend increase. We have launched a number of initiatives to become even more efficient and more profitable. And we have uh, set down a plan for accelerated growth through 2023. And we are here with confirming our ambitious medium-term targets. I am very confident that our strategy will work. Our future continues to look good. We will continue to be needed. We will be able to provide ever more people with ever better medicine. In the coming years, we are again going to grow dynamically. And in doing so, we will make Fresenius even more valuable. And I'm also confident that we will soon turn the corner on the pandemic. Fresenius will continue to play a role here. Just recently, we entered into an agreement with CureVac. We are planning uh, the supply of uh, salt solutions for infusions for, for more than 100 million doses of vaccines in the next two years. Nevertheless, the situation is very serious. We have to remain vigilant. The virus has shown us how adaptable it is. Mutations pose a great risk, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. We have a chance to get the virus under control and to bring an end to the suffering and death and gradually to return to normality, step by step. And that will bring a tremendous relief to many, many people because then it will make it possible for us to meet in person again, as you saw in our photo from 2019. And I'm really looking forward to that.